So in this video, we're going to talk about converting my MITS 88 SIOB to actually be the TTY0 device uh, in my Altair 8800 build. We looked at this card in previous videos, uh, cleaned it up, we added our RS232 line drivers to it. I actually tried, um, dropped it in and tried to use it as, use it as TTY0 and, and it failed to work. And I very quickly knew why, and I'm going to talk about why in this video. So if you look at the schematic for the uh, 80 uh, or the uh, SIOB here, I want to actually zoom in a bit down here on the data available and the transmit buffer. Uh, that little one of two scrolling up didn't help. The transmit buffer uh, is ready to uh, send data out signal here, and if we look at the data available, it comes off pin 19. It comes around and gets gated through this device here and then do a 74 LS367 and eventually DA out as uh, data in zero on the, on the Altar bus. And that's the same as the uh, SSM IO4 card we used uh, and, and the other serial cards we've used in the build of this. The issue here is the TBMT signal. So it's pin 22 on the UART. And if we follow it around, same kind of path, it gets gated through here again to the 74 loss 367 and it gets output here on data uh, input 7 on the bus and the version of CPM I'm running expects to find that signal down here on data in 1. So the question in my mind become uh, in this case these are inverted I don't need them to be inverted So I don't think I need them to be inverted. Uh, and I base that on, let's come, here, come over here and look at the uh, Solid State Music 4P plus S, or 2S IO card. This is the one that we also looked at in a previous video that we got working as TTY0. I've, to, I've got, captured the schematic from it. I've done some cleanup. Uh, somebody had come through the original schematic and there was check marks on things they tested. And I cleaned all that up. I've represented here the strapping we did. And this is the strapping that took, if we look, uh, the TBMT signal through a 367 driver again, and directly onto data one on the processor bus, and then the data available signal, and gated it through to data zero. And in these case, these aren't inverted. Coming onto the bus, so they really are just the raw signals out of the UART directly onto the processor bus you know, through a tri-state buffer on, on bits data 0 and data 1. So the question really becomes here, will these inverted versions of these signals work or not? So the first thing I need to do is move this, this uh, TBMT signal that's being routed up to pin 7 or to data input 7 down to data input 1. And I really think the easiest way to do this is to float pin 9 on the device because I want to isolate this trace here. So float pin 9, I'll just bend it up out of the socket and then I'll put a jumper wire on the device from pin 9 to pin 3. And that really should resolve the issue. If it's reading processor data, these 367 drivers are read. I mean UART data. If it's reading status bits, these two become active on the bus. So that's really the first thing uh, I think we need to do here. Uh, the other question becomes, I haven't fully walked through the logic of this to know whether these ultimately end up inverted here or not. Uh, it's kind of hard to say, I'm not sure. If in the end the signals are getting inverted here, uh, what I would do is probably maybe float pin 6 and 10 and just use some jumper links to bring them directly over to DA and TBMT on the UART. It kind of depends. I mean, I could do it that way. That would be a, a workable solution. There might be a way on the back foil or the front foil of the board either way to, to isolate, you know, cut these traces open and do the jump ring. I'm really kind of trying to not cut traces on the board as much as, you know, I'd, I'd rather lift pins where I can. Uh, I could tack directly onto the UART pins, TBMT and DA, pin 19 and 22, and do this. Uh, 
I'll have to give it some thought here. The easiest way to prototype this is to bend pins up and, and tack leads on and hook things up. So I really think we'll jump into that next and give this a shot. And the first thing we'll do is just uh, float pin 9, jumper to pin 3, and see if that solves the issue. So obviously we're back up on the bench and we're going to go ahead and make the mod to device L here we had talked about. But I'm not going to actually do it to the original 367 that was on the board when I acquired it. I'm going to take one of these AT, uh, 1897 parts that I've got here that we tested the board with and I'm going to make the change on this device here instead. So it should be a 16 pin device, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to go ahead and bend out pin 9. Get the device into the socket. Actually, before I do that, let's uh, get a piece of wrap wire ready to go. I'll just do this with regular wire wrap wire. I will strip back a little bit of the insulation here. It's a little too long, I think. I'm going to wrap directly onto that pin rather than solder to it. It's always a bit tricky to do with an IC pin. Let's see if I have any luck with this. I've had luck in the past doing this. with that and I just bent the heck out of that pin. So I guess we are going to tack solder both sides on. Uh, let me find the little pair of needle nose here. Man, I made a mess of that pin. I may be going to... Sacrifice that pin at this point. Well, I've been able to wire up directly onto pins in the past. I'm not sure why that failed as miserably as it did. But such is life. Get the device back in. I just need a little bit of wrap wire. Out there, we're going to go from pin three to pin nine. Something I can get this to strip. It's always hard with wrap wire that's this. Wow, that is what the heck. It's starting to strip. Get the blade back in the same position I was before. A little bit of solder on pin three. Or pie on the knee. Solder getting down into the socket. A little bit of solder on the wire. It's a little bit too long still. Come over to pin 9, which we mangled a second ago. Place. 
And with that, we should be ready to go off and give this a try. So that should now be routing uh, the TBMT signal to data one. So really, it's put the board in and see if it works correctly. So we will uh, pick up on the other bench. So since there was nothing exciting to see when I tried to boot the machine there, I'm not going to include that video. Basically what happened is with the card in, the machine starts to boot CPM. I can hear the disk step to the next track, and then the machine just stops uh, and doesn't move forward. And I believe what's happening is it wants to tr uh, uh, transmit a, a byte out uh, the, the COM port, and it's seeing that TBMT is being expressed onto the bus as if the uh, uh, transmit buffer has got a character in it and it can't move forward. And so I think the real answer to this is really I'm going to float pin 6 and pin 10 on device L. And I'm going to jumper pin 6 to pin 2 on device C and pin 10 to pin 5 here on device C. And that will remove the inverter. trying to decide whether that'll work or not. I really don't understand what this mess right here is supposed to do. This has got to do with interrupt generation down here. Data available. There's this logic back here on A0. And this ultimately decodes whether we're going to do a, a serial in, serial out on either, uh, you, you, you know, the port, in this case, port uh, 10 hex or 11 hex, or 10 would be the status byte. And this is really deciding whether we're reading data or uh, the status. And I guess ultimately what it's doing is it's enabling these devices wants to send. What's curious to me here is the enables for device L and K are all tied together and those enables come from up here and this is taking I'm going to read from one port or I'm going to read from the other port. So this is generating there's going to be a port read on one of the two ports and it's going to turn on all of these What's curious about this is, you know, in the schematic, this output is wire word to this output. They are tri-state outputs, but both of these guys will come active at the same time. And I just find that really curious why this was designed this way. Uh, why the enable for these isn't separate from the enable for these. And that's not got me questioning whether jump ring 6 to 2 and 10 to 5 will actually 10 to 2 won't work, 10 to 1 won't work or would it be 1? Yeah, DA would go actually to 1, I, I misquoted the pin numbers here and that's going to be the TBMT really questioning whether that will work because it bypasses the logic in here. It's a really odd design. Yeah, the wire ores here are interesting. Uh, anyhow, why not try this? So let me. I'm going to hand right here a little sheet out. We've got device C to device L. We're going to float pin 6. We're going to float pin 10. And we're going to jump or pin 6 to pin 1, which is DA, or data available. And we're going to jump or pin 10 to 4, which is TBMT. 
So we'll go up and make those changes and see what we get. So we ping pong back up to the bench. Let's pull out the device for floating pins on. And I indicate here I want to float pin 6 and pin 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And pin 10. I'm going to kind of move this piece of wrap wire here out of the way. And I want to get to device C, which is right here. And I'm going to put some solder on the shoulder of pin 1 and 4. In this case, I'm putting solder onto the shoulders of a vintage chip. One and four. Get some wrap wire. my best to tin these up a bit. Cut these down nice and short. This one on to pin four. Sounds like there might be a delivery truck outside. Six. Let me uh, get some solder on the pins. I certainly doubt this is going to work. Looking at the schematic, but one never knows. So we said pin one goes to pin six. So pin one's going to come over to here. Solder, oh, dog on it. Drop the soldering pencil handle. We'll just come straight into pin six here. That's pin one to pin six. We're going to come four over to ten. Yeah, it's starting to look very kludgy. The other way to approach this would have just been to patch CPM to deal with these bits being inverted and on different uh, pins than it expects. But I'd really like to keep the CPM 
build compatible with how the other cards are all jumpered. It's being stubborn. Certainly not anything pretty. That's got four to ten and six to one. Okay, well, that's made those two connections. So let's ready back down to the bench now and give that mess a try. All of the traces I'm worried about here are on the top of the board and right underneath the socket, so there'd be no clean way to do this by trace cutting. But again, such is life. This isn't that horrible a cleavage. Anyhow, I'll see you back downstairs. So we've successfully made the change where we floated pin 6 and 10 here, and then we have pin 6 to pin 1, and pin 10 to pin 4. And that basically should be passing the raw TBMT and DA signals through and with the other change we made down on the data 0 and data 1. Uh, so really the next step is to power the machine up and see if we get any further this time. So let me rotate back over here to the machine. I've got the power on the machine. Floppies are running. Reset it. Examine FF00 and here's the moment of truth. Ha! We've got the CPM boot on the uh, MITS uh, SIOB card. So, with those changes, I will document these changes, but that's uh, really nice. Derve. I really like the fact that I can run this card on that old, or the machine on that old original card that we've you know, put so much time and effort into. And there it is. We've got ports hex 10 and 11 are the UART, 10 is the status, 11 is the data. That's really cool. Uh, success. I'm still confused a whole lot why the enable to gate the status onto the bus is the same as the enable to gate data onto the bus. Uh, it really does create a wire or on these 367s and I guess the wire or is strong enough that if this guy's trying to output a 1, outputting a 0 here will pull that low via the wire or. I kind of hate doing that. I guess the 367s must be tolerant of it. At least they thought so in this design. Uh, or is that really a wire and? It's really a wire and. It requires both outputs to be ones in order for the pin to be a one. Or in negative logic, if either one's low, it pulls it low. But it's really kind of a wire and. I'm talking about positive logic. Anyhow, I am psyched. Uh, you know, the S solid state memory card we looked at that's a few years uh, er younger than this card works as well. We got it working. We looked at that in a previous video, but it's really cool to be on an actual MITS card here. It's the only authentic MITS card in the machine, but still, it's a MITS card. So, very cool. So, uh, I guess I'll wrap this little set of videos up here. And we'll talk soon.